Hi booktube! I'm here today to do my July um, book haul. Um, I picked up quite a few books. Um, most of them I got at my local um, thrift store I guess. Um, it's a really cool thrift store because instead of like having books mixed in with clothes and toys and whatnot, it's solely devoted to books which is perfect. Um, every single book is a dollar and um, including hardbacks and uh, paperbacks and then including new books too they have like um, a really good selection actually of um, new releases um, just like that are been being donated and then children's books are 50 cents and so um, I, put, I pick every time I go I get like a bag of books because you can go in with ten dollars and get ten books so I mean who can say no to that um, and so yeah um, I got most of them there and then I also went by my library and um, they were having a book sale and so I picked up a couple books from there they're like they're pricey <laughs> they're two dollars <laughs> each instead of the one dollar place I go to but yeah I still got um, a couple books from there as well um so yeah let's get into it and so um the first couple books I'm gonna be talking about are books I read um picked up not read picked up for the romance book bingo because um this like whole challenge of like reading romance books is um kind of like a new thing for me because uh I've read a I read a couple of romance a year but it's not like my main focus or something I would normally pick up like every week. Um, but I really like how it's like um, kind of like having me, having me like broaden my um, my reading genres because um, I did read them, but not often. And so I, I've had such um, fun going through the romance aisles in the bookstore and um, finding all sorts of um, new authors and new books to like try and see and experiment with to see you know what. Um, is uh, suited for me and so this is an author that um, I read um, a couple books about. I read um, like a Harmony Harmony something series I read that a couple weeks ago and then I read the first book and this series this is a, her uh, a Ransom Canyon uh, romance series and the first one was uh, Ransom Canyon and so uh, I don't have the book here but there's a cover of that was the first book so these I have the um the for Jody, Jody Thomas I have the um, book two and I think book three or four um, but they're really nice covers. Um, they're like um, set in Texas and these have really good like summer vibes and um, yeah I really like the series because it um, it isn't just romance. It's more of a drama. Um, it doesn't focus just on like one couple. I mean it does it, it does focus on them but you do get a lot of side characters and I would I mean they're kind of main characters in themselves because you get whole chapters devoted to them so it like switch um, switches perspective and um yeah I, I really like the it's more like well-rounded I think um so they're perfect for me so yeah uh, I'm happy to find these two and then I also found um because like when I think of romance I don't know, I see this author all the time Debbie McComer and I read a couple books by her and this is um Thursday at eight and um yeah I like her because um okay there's a glare okay, there we go um because she doesn't have like um graphic uh, sex scenes or anything like that which I, it's not my cup of tea at all so I like books that are more behind closed doors or like not mentioned at all I'm fine with something like that you know and so um yeah I think she's like a perfect author uh, for me for, in that aspect and this just sounded good it says um, a time to think about lives lived choices made a time for friends and so I like how it's you know like more of like a women's fiction contemporary book it's focused on Claire Elizabeth Karen and Julia and it says every week Four women have an unmissable appointment in their calendars. They meet for breakfast. And I'm sure it's all about, you know, like, them coming together with, um, you know, what's going on in their lives and, you know, the upheaval and, and the joys that, that um, their life brings them and, you know, have that companionship um, with friends. And so, yeah, I like this kind of book. It'll be, a, like, a, a light uh, read for me. And then I have a couple more. This one, I have never read this author. This is L Lori Cass, a Lending a Paul. Where it's like, but a cat hair <laughs> I don't know about, uh, uh, cats but yeah this just looked so cute I, I just had to pick it up and it says a bookmobile cat mystery it's his first in a new series and it says they break for murder and break like, like they stop <laughs> like break, the, break on the car it says um, with the help of her rescue cat Edie uh, Edie librarian oh oh sorry with the help of rescue cat named Edie um, librarian Minnie Hamilton is driving a bookmobile based in the resort town of uh, Chilson, Michigan. But she'd better keep her hands on the wheel because it's going to get be a bumpy ride. And so I'm sure like the cat, like Lenny Paul, is going to play an important role, maybe like a side character in um, helping discover uh, the mystery of you know, who, who uh, 
who was the murderer. So yeah, um, this is like a cozy mystery read for me. I, I, I think I mentioned, I said romance, but no, cozy mystery. <laughs> Sorry. I put it in the pile of uh, romance uh, books. So this one, the cover drew my eye. Um, I love fall and this just, it's um, called Family Tree by Susan Wiggs. And I haven't read anything by Susan Wiggs, Susan Wiggs um, but I've seen her quite a bit when I was looking through the romance aisles. And so this book, I mean, I, I just, I had to get it. It's just, I cannot wait for fall. The summer is so hot and the fall is just the perfect weather. Um, let's see, this is Love, Success, A Handsome Husband, A Beautiful Home. These are the things that Annie Rush can call her own. These are the foundations of her charm life in Los Angeles. But in an instant that is shattered, that life is shattered, but in an instant, that life is shattered. Okay, can't talk. And as, as Annie sifts through the ashes, she must face the shock and pain of a devastating loss. Grieving and wounded, she retreats, she retreats to her family home in Switchback, Vermont, a maple farm generations old. So I was like thinking like, it said Los Angeles. I'm like, that isesn't really, I've lived in Los Angeles and they don't, I mean, the only trees they have are like planted there. And so, um, yeah, there's not many like forests of like with like maple trees and stuff. So yeah, her going to Vermont makes a lot more sense for this cover. And so, yeah, this sounds like it's going to be a nice, like, um, you know, set in Vermont. Again, perfect for fall. And, um, yeah, like, I need to have some, like, pumpkin spice lattes or something and, and read this book. And then I also have, this has a sticker on it. I can't get it off. But um, this is, um, speaking of California, this is California Girls. This is, like, a nice um, summer read. It has a Target sticker, but, again, I got it from uh, the thrift store. And so, yeah, this is, like, a perfect, like, beach beach read and this says the California sun shines not quite so right for three sisters who get dumped in the same week and so this is kind of like the Debbie McComber book with um it's kind of like a romance but it's mostly going to be focusing on I think like the you know the women's friendship more than romance so um this is the kind of story that I would gravitate towards um so yeah this one looked really nice and then um uh, Sarah from Stephen Book is doing, um, she's, she's the one who came up with the romance book Bingo. And so she is doing a read-along of um, the Outlander series. And this can count for um, a couple of the challenges, actually, in the romance book Bingo. And, um, and again, I'm catting around this. <laughs> it's catting around everything. When you put something down, you know, my cat, like, rubs against the corners of things. I'm sure you cat people know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm happy. To, I found um, a mass market earlier this month. Um, but I don't really like reading mass markets. I mean, especially with big books, you know, like they're kind of hard to, um, hold open and, you know, the, the spine cracks, but this like, it's already been read and the spine hasn't been cracked. And, um, yeah, it's a nice floppy, a uh, trade paperback, which is exactly the format I was looking for. And so I was actually like, um, holding off on participating in this read because it started at the beginning of June, um, or July. <laughs> oh boy. Um, uh, I'm, I get everything. My month has been so busy that I'm getting, everything's all jumbled. But yeah, it started anyway. It started recently. But I, I was holding off to participating until I found a copy that I like. And so um, I found my copy. And so I'm going to be participating. I think it's like she's breaking it down into, um, you know, five chapters a week. But it's very like a laid back read along. You can participate, you know, whenever, you know, you get your chance, you, whenever you get time. And then um, like she's leaving the um, Goodreads page open. Um, so I'll, like, I'm just going to read my five chapters and then, uh, you know, post what I think about it um, as I go along. Um, but yeah, this sounds uh, really good. I have never read this book and I have not seen the TV show. I know nothing except historical fiction. <laughs> that's all I know about it. And it's like Scotland. That, that's it. So um, I'm sure a lot of you know, know this, or heard this um, book or, you know, seen the TV show. But I'm in, hopefully for a treat. Um, this says, uh, if anyone doesn't know, uh, it says the year is 1945. Uh, Claire Randall, a former combat nurse, is back from the war. And reunited with her husband on a second honeymoon. When she walks through a, sta a standing stone in one of the ancient stone circles that dot the British Isles, suddenly she is a Sassanach, an outlander, and a Scotland torn by war and raiding Highland clans in the year of our Lord, 1743. Hurled back in time by forces she cannot understand, Claire is capped, uh, catapulted into, in to, into intrigues and dangers that may threaten her life and shatter her heart. For here she meets James Fraser, a gallant young Scots warrior, and becomes a a woman and becomes a woman torn between fidelity and desire. For some reason, when I read that, it sounded like um, the James Fraser, the warrior, was going to become a woman. <laughs> but no, um, so it says, and be, so she meets him and becomes a woman torn between fidelity and desire, and between two vastly different men in her, in two in irreconceivable lives. And so maybe it's, it sounds like she's 
wanting to stay in 1743 Scotland um, because of this man, um, even though she's already in a relationship um, in 1945. So yeah, this it's kind of like, this will be interesting. Um, I wish it didn't have this little sticker on it, but at least it isn't the, the book covers. I mean, some book cover, um, movie covers can be okay, but I much prefer like the original. And so I can deal with the little sticker. And then so moving on from um, like romance uh, and fiction, um, I got quite a few nonfiction because I, I always, no matter what, I always check out the nonfiction uh, area because you, know, you never know what you can find. And so um, I got quite of like diverse uh, books from all all sorts of like because in nonfiction it's just not it's not all like one topic. You know, there's all sorts of genres categories in nonfiction. So this one is a nature book. And this is Sally Carragher's One Day at Teton uh, Marsh. And um, I read her um, One Day at Beetle Rock. And it was fantastic. This author is, is so good. And there's a picture of her on the back. Um, but yeah, she is a fantastic uh, nature writer. And I was thrilled to see her. She's out of print. And so, like, I checked on, um, like, the Amazon, like, ebooks, And there's only a couple of hers. And so, I just, I ch always checked like the nature areas to see if I can find any more of her books. She, she, she wrote quite a few. Let's see if it lists them here. It might not um, of all the books. And there's actually a description here. It says, this book was, um, I guess, given to someone in Christmas, 1967. It says, for, um, from all of us, uh, from, for all from Anne, um, let's visit the Teton Marsh. And so, yeah, it's really nice having a little uh, personal inscription. Uh, so this, this book is really old, but you know, it's in good condition. Um, it's like just a little bit... Um, worn at the edges but yeah um really good condition for 1967. uh so uh, one day on beetle rock one day at teton marsh and she's also written um, at the time of this printing uh icebound summer and so she like um uh, one day at beetle rock she actually lived in um the sierra, sierra nevada mountains that one was set there and for like i think it was like around 10 years and it was like, you know, studying the animals and so each chapter in that book focused on a different animal and a different perspective at that setting. So I think this is the same um, format. It's like the chapters um, kind of make sense. Like the first chapter is the otter, um, the cutthroat trout, the osprey, um, in the willow cove, the mosquito, the scud, the mink, the hare, the moose. And so um, the leech, that'll be interesting, the leopard frog, the snail, the trumpeter swan, and the beaver. And so, yeah, you get, I think it's the same thing, you get different perspectives in this um, one area. And so, yeah, I... If you if you haven't if you like nature books and you haven't read Sally Kegger, I highly recommend. If you do see her come across her, um, give her a chance. Even though you know they look older, um, yeah, they're well worth uh, your time. And then I also got um, a Wood Song by Gary Paulson, and he wrote um, Hatchet. And um, oh, I read another book by him. It was about dogs that I really liked. Um, let's see if it mentions it in here. I can't, I can't remember the title of it, but. Um, that one's like, I think it was My Life and Dogs. I think that's what it was. And so this is all about his mushing um, experience in Alaska. And this says, um, when Gary Paulson travels with his, and this is a true uh, true story, because he does write fiction. Um, anyway, when Gary Paulson travels with his sled dogs, he is up against the most unforgiving side of nature. Facing the brutality cold Minnesota wilderness is a challenge he is determined to survive. The ultimate test is Alaska's Iditarod. Alone with only his dogs for company, Paulson begins a thousand mile trek through frozen Arctic wasteland, a journey that may cost him his life. With thrilling immediacy, the award-winning novelist pulls into the pulls us into the breathtaking drama of his own story. Woodsong is especially compelling because it is true. And this um was actually in the kids section and um it has really big font. But I think you know adults can um, read it too. And so um so yeah, I'm interested because I really liked his life with dogs. And so, and it did mention, you know, he's a dog he had, um, in his time in Alaska, but, um, I always like books, you know, set in Alaska because it's like, it's like, it's like the last frontier of sorts. And, um, so yeah, it's like, you know, it's such an extreme climate and, you know, it puts people to the test, but these dogs, you know, like they seem to really, you know, they love the snow and, um, love sledding. And, uh, so yeah, this will be a nice, uh, read for me. Probably, um, I'll probably do it in the winter time, uh, for this one, save it for that time. And then um, I also got uh, In the Garden of the Beasts, Love, Terror, and an American Family in Hitler's Berlin by Eric Larson. And the only book by him that I've read um, is uh, Devil in the White City. And I didn't particularly care for it because um, he like, split the focus between um, the World's Fair 
and this um, like psychopath uh, murderer. And I really liked hit the murder um, focus, but the World's Fair, like you know, like the history of it and how they set up, was boring to me. I was not. It didn't pull me in. I kept it kept interrupting, you know, with talking about the World's Fair. I just wanted to learn about this really interesting um, man. And um, so yeah, but so I haven't really picked anything up. I haven't picked anything up by him um, since then. This was like years and years ago. But this one sounds really good. It says, um, the time is 1933. The place is Berlin. When William E. Dodd becomes America's first ambassador to Hitler's Germany in a year that proved to be a turning point in history, a mild-mannered professor from Chicago, Dodd brings al along his wife, son, and flamboyant daughter, Martha. At first, Martha is entranced by the parties and pop Parties and pomp and the handsome young men of the Third Reich with their infectious enthusiasm for restoring Germany to a position of world prominence. But as evidence of Jewish persecution mounts, confirmed by chilling first-person testimony, her father telegrams his concerns to a largely, largely indifferent State Department back home. This is 1933, so this is way before, not way before, but years before World, world War I. And so it says, um, Dodd, Dodd watches with alarm as Jews are attacked. The press is censored and drafts of frightening new laws become to circulate. Um, as that first year unfolds and the shadows deepen, the Dodds experience days full of excitement, intrigue, romance, and ultimately horror. When a climactic spasm of violence and murder reveals Hitler's true nature and ruthless ambition. And so this is, um, it sounds really interesting because, I, you know, of course, I mean, not of course, but you know, when you read World War II books, you know, it focuses a lot on the war and what's going on. And um, so there's not, I've not read that many books set before World War One, like, you know, like the times, I mean, that's always included in the World War II books, but um, the Nazi books solely focused on that. And so this sounds really good, you know, how like, you know, Hitler was just this dynamic figure and, you know, it's very persuasive in horrific, horrific ways. And, um, so yeah, it's like how, you know, the changing mindset of, um, you know, how, what we thought of Germany and Hitler. There's also a picture here in the, in the inside. Um, there's a picture of the city. And so, yeah, this is, um, this sounds fascinating. And so I'm hoping to, you know, give Eric Larson a, a second chance and, um, really like this book, hopefully. It, it sounds, it sounds really good. I think, um, good but in a bad way that kind of thing um and then i got uh stalingrad the fateful siege on uh, 1942 to 1943 and this is by anthony beaver and um i heard a lot about this author and um so i was happy to find uh, this book and um this is the battle of stalingrad was not only the psychological um, psychological turning point of world war ii it also changed the fate of modern warfare Historians and, and reviewers worldwide have hailed Anthony Beaver's ma um, magisterial Stalingrad as the definitive account of World, World War II's most harrowing battle. And so this is focusing solely on Stalingrad. And um, so yeah, this one I cannot wait to get to as well. All the history books, just give me all of them. <laughs> and then I got, um, this is a book I've seen forever in like every single bookstore. And like, I know it's supposed to be a really good biography. And so I do want to... Um, do want to get to this um because he's such an, an interesting was an interesting man and this um the way this buyer he's told um i've heard really really good story not good story really good um reviews of his writing and um i got a picture on here um so yeah i'm sure you've seen all of this um <laughs> you've, i'm sure you've seen this in all of your books as well but for a dollar i mean i couldn't pass it up and um because it's a book i do want to read um sometime and you know i have it on my shelves <laughs> And then the last book I got um, is My Dearest Friend, Letters of Abigail and John Adams. And um, I read uh, John Adams by, um, oh, now I'm blanking on his name. It's a, <laughs> a famous historian uh, that's like, you know, like a, a popular uh, historian, um, David McCullough. There we go. I had to think about it for a second. <laughs> but so I read that book um, like three or four years ago. And, um, I really liked, um, the letters between, um, Abigail Adams and John Adams because, um, even though they were married for many, many, many years, a lot of their time was actually spent apart. And so, um, you really get a sense of the time and their relationship. And so I was so happy to find a, um, a book of all, like not all of the letters, but, um, you know, selected letters. And so, and this is, um, the four was by George, Joseph J. Ellis. 
and he's written a couple of um, really good books as well. And so yeah, this is um, sounds perfect to dive into and um, for like Revolutionary War era time. And so yeah, this was um, I was happy to find this one as well. And so these are all my uh, books I picked up in July. I probably won't pick up any in August. I'm trying to you know, like run that in a bit and cause, cause I will be moving <laughs> in August sometime. And so, um, yeah, I need to, you know, read what I have and, you know, like get rid of, um, you know, what I've already read to, um, make space. Um, cause I don't like lugging boxes and boxes of books, but you know, I've, you know, um, not got that many books compared to a lot of other people, um, on booktube, uh, throughout this year. So it's, it's manageable. Um, so yeah, let me know if you've read any of these books and I'll see you soon. Thanks booktube.